it's like the better they are at selling, the more dysfunctional their personal lives are. (laughs) Buddy, we are back with another amazing podcast. And this is a newfound friend of mine we have on the podcast today. Actually just got done at a little men's retreat and event with this man. And super powerful. This guy brings the heat whenever he talks. So I'm excited to have the one, the only Mr. James Wood. Thanks for coming on the podcast with us today, James. Yeah, thanks for having me, Taylor. That was a blast. Uh, we finally met at, uh, uh, somehow we've uh, managed to not meet all this time, despite us both being active in the social circles. So it's about time it happened. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. It was pretty, pretty interesting. We both were like, oh, we're in solar. And we've been at like probably 10 of the same events and <laughs> yeah. somehow hadn't met each other. I know we're both at SolarCon. I was like moderating some of the stuff and you were running around with all the speakers. So I'm like, how did we not meet each other? At least to that. Yeah. I'm sure we saw each yeah, other, but know. you know. But I know you're a popular guy, so probably, probably I couldn't get your attention at the last. <laughs> right, well, right back at you. I think you're more popular than me. Uh. <laughs> no, but I can tell because yeah, James is so many. We just got done with this uh, momentous man retreat with um, James Bunnell. Super good uh, retreat. We'll probably talk a little bit about her in a minute. But uh, no, I could tell James is someone that's really good at connecting with people. At um, networking and you can tell he's just a guy that everyone wants to learn from and be around so i'm excited to talk a lot about that stuff and how he his background in solar and how he trains his team but um yes yeah, so we'll introduce you a little bit james but he is the vp of sales at a company called e equals and um i know you guys are what in three states is that right two states right now just illinois illinois we've done some other states in the past but our main focus has been illinois we just recently opened up ohio and we're looking at expanding into a couple other potential markets as well yeah cool so yeah i want to get in your uh, background and everything james but before that um i guess while it's fresh on our mind we just got done with this um this men's retreat momentous man and uh, had a good time there so um yeah what were your thoughts on the events and i guess would you recommend people do events like that but i want to i'm curious to hear your um thoughts on the event we just got done doing yeah i um so i've never done anything like that before um but i've known jens for a couple of years again seen him met him at a event i was emceeing for for the SolarCon guys when they were doing those solar boot camps um and he hit me up and asked if I would uh, want to join. And I was like, well, I'm going to be a dad in February. So it seems like a good time to like try to grow and develop. Um, and uh, I, I don't know if you did like the little exit interview thing with Carlos where they like, uh, you know, they recorded in, like a testimonial sort of thing. And it's like, I want to encourage people to go. But I also feel like if you tell people too much, like half of the, I think half of the benefit of it is just kind of going in blind and trusting the process. Um yeah. But yeah, it was, I would highly recommend it. It was really cool. Jens definitely knows his stuff and knows what he's doing and, um, you know, got to meet a lot of cool people. And I think there was a lot of growth that happened with a lot of people and then a lot of fun activities too. Taking out those, I've never done, uh, like doing side-by-sides or shot shotguns before Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. I mean, you're getting in the cold plunge with other guys. Uh, oh <laughs> yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did cold plunge sauna side-by-sides. So, uh, yeah, it was fun. And, um, like you, I will never say done. I, what I did feel pretty cool when I beat you and your brother at the, in our little skeet shooting elimination game. That made me feel pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Shout out. We'll have to do a rematch. Uh, that, that wasn't that your Beginner's first time. Yeah. yeah literally wait. the first time shooting a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, pretty embarrassing. I grew up in small town where that's like what we did every weekend practically and, um, yeah, got yeah, smoked. Beginner's luck head. is definitely a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no, it was fun though. Um, and yeah, for those that aren't like familiar with Jens Bunnell, his company is Momentum, I think it's called, but, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, he, he runs a lot of events like that where it's just kind of like, you know, the emotional side, he's getting his like PhD in, um, psychology, I think. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, so he's really good at just like tapping in. It's not sales training, but it's, you know, just like mental, emotional, uh, improving relationships. So, um, I actually think it's something that a lot of guys neglect in sales because everyone's like, Oh, more sales, more this and that. But, um, a lot of times we don't think about what's this other part. So many sales guys have like problems with maybe addiction or like, you know, issues, emotional issues and, uh, Mm -hmm. need to master that side of it. And, um, it's like Jen's talks about his events. Um, just, 
just focusing on those things, not even sales training is he's seen a huge increase in guys, uh, sales numbers just by like focusing, not even on sales training, but on just yep. like, you know, the mental, emotional, um, psychological stuff going on. So yeah, that's well, what I think is really, well, man, I don't know if the same, I know you manage people too, but if, uh, if the same is true for you as it is for me, it's like sometimes your top sales guys, uh, it's like the better they are at selling, the more dysfunctional their personal lives are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely seen that. Uh, so uh, it was definitely, um, I, I thought it was really cool just to go. And I guess that I'd encourage anyone, whether you're just a sales rep, you interviewed him. You had a podcast with him not too long ago, right? Yeah. Yeah, really okay. good. So, I mean, I'd say if you, uh, if, if you're all at all curious about it, check out that interview that, uh, Taylor did. Uh, and if you like what you hear, cause, um, like you said, just kind of, you know, if, uh, especially if you're in management, you know, you're spending a lot of time always like coaching other people on mindset stuff or whatever. So I went into it and I was like, I know I'm going to learn something, but I don't know what I'm going to learn. Cause I feel like, Hey, I've, I've read all the books and done this stuff. And like, I kind of know all that, but it was still really cool. Like I learned a lot of stuff that I it was kind of. I told Jens it felt like it was like some missing pieces that I didn't know were missing. And then it just kind of made for a better collective picture after filling those gaps. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, super powerful being able to connect with, you know, a group of like, like-minded people that are all trying to improve in their relationships and their businesses and um, work on that side of things. So definitely mm -hmm. cool. And there's uh, a lot of non-solar people too. I don't, I'm sure you're a lot yeah. like me where it's like, Hey, I love everybody in solar, but sometimes it feels like everyone, everyone I know is in solar. So it's nice meeting some people yeah. outside of that world. Yeah. 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 Sometimes you get sick of solar guys. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, super cool. But yeah, no. So Jen's, he didn't pay us to make a testimonial form or anything, but, but no, we just um, wanted to oh, talk about Jen's that. Didn't, Jen's didn't pay you. Jen's didn't pay you. No. I didn't he sent me like 10 okay. grand for this. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm joking. Right, Jen, that's not, we, uh, here, you know? <laughs> Taylor and I literally were talking, we were talking at the retreat. It was like, Hey, we should definitely do a podcast. And, uh, I was like, yeah, we, I think that we should definitely give, uh, Jen's a shout out for it. Cause again, like if you're listening to this, you know, you're obviously the type of person that likes learning new stuff and growing. And I would yeah. just go into it blind. Just get, just do it. You won't regret it. If you regret it, I will, uh, I'll cover the cost. <laughs> I'm that confident that you'll, okay. that, that, that people will enjoy it. Well, money back guarantee. Okay. Love yeah, it. Yeah, there you go. That's good. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, so that was a great event. Um, so yeah, let's get into your background a little bit, James. Like, how'd you get into solar? Um, what were you doing before this? Yeah, because I actually don't even know that. I didn't ask you that at the event. So what's your uh, background? Um, I've been in solar since 2018. Um, I, before that, I was doing cemetery sales. So I was like literally like at the cemetery, like selling like headstones and like burial plots and oh. stuff like that. Yeah, our customers were dying to see us. Uh, <laughs> but, um, uh, and I was doing that and um, I had a buddy that was doing sales, uh, solar sales. And he basically said, he was like, dude, I don't care what you're doing right now. You can definitely make more money selling solar. Like there's this going on, blah, blah, blah. And uh so I kind of got into doing that. I actually was trying to get into like life insurance, I think. Um, but then they, uh, they like ended up rejecting me, which was very uh, disappointing because like I, at the time I was dealing with uh, some uh, legal issues uh, <laughs> and they were like, yeah, we can't do this while this is still pending. Um, yeah. I, uh, I made some poor choices in like 2015, 2016 and still had like a pending DUI on there so they were like yeah we won't hire you with this <laughs> but okay i uh, thought i was i thought you were gonna say because you were doing like cemetery cells before so it was like conflict of oh interest. conflict of interest <laughs> yeah. You're that's really funny <laughs> um but yes yeah, so i got into that and uh the company it was kind of a similar story and i know it sounds like we had similar sort of journeys in solar with the whole started off i did a little bit of setting, but really got into closing really quickly because I had sales experience and they had a bunch of setters and a lot of appointments. Um, so like really I sh like shadowed two appointments and then I was like, all right, well, here's appointments go close. And really no idea. And at first I was very doubtful. I was like, there's no way like people are signing these contracts and doing this and whatever else. But sure enough, um, that company was not one of the best companies. It was one of the ones doing, um, I won't name any names, but, uh, doing the whole and i'm grateful for the opportunity learned a lot got me into solar and like at the time i was like oh this is so much money this is amazing this is so much better than what i was doing but looking back on it we were like doing the whole uh selling a 70 percent offset and saying that it was 30 because or saying it was 100 because of light bulbs and thermostat and 
selling at like six fifty a watt and then getting paid like two hundred dollars a kilowatt and uh, acting like, you know, so, and this was like before the crazy dealer fee days and all that stuff. So, um, yeah. ended up like I, I got into like, I went to the solar cheat code event in uh, Key West with uh, Bill Murphy and met a bunch of people there and then got into doing kind of the online marketing stuff to generate leads. And this was back in the winter wonderland days where you could like get Facebook leads for $7 a lead. And then like half of them, you would call them and like half of them would answer and then half of those would set an appointment. And I was like, this is the best thing ever. Um, yeah. But, but the company only wanted to there. They were like, cause I was like, well, this is going to get paid as a self gen. And then I'm just going to split it with whoever closes it. If I don't close it. And they're like, Oh no, we're going to pay you as a setter on this. And I was like, uh, no, I don't think that's how it's going to work. But and basically just from there branched off, ended up having starting a sales org uh, with uh, my business partner at the time, Austin, and just built it from there. COVID hit right after we started doing that. And uh, that's how we got into blitzing was we were like, well, like we can't sell here, but Florida is like, give no fuck zone. So you can go do whatever you want down there. So we started going down to Florida uh, yeah. just to get around the COVID stuff. It's funny looking back on that where it's like, everyone's like, well, make sure you stay at home and don't talk to strangers and don't travel. It's like we were traveling and putting a bunch of dudes in a blitz house and going and talking to strangers and sitting in their homes. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah. We did have like really strict quarantine rules though. Like if someone got the sniffles or anything like that, they either stayed in the room all day or they went home. Cause I was like, listen, I don't want to be getting sick. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Um, so were you in Houston the whole, you've always been in Houston or did you start solar in a different market before? No, started in, uh, I was living in upstate South Carolina in Greenville. And then we, I was selling primarily in like the Asheville, North Carolina area. So I was like driving up an hour, uh, and then an hour back uh, at, for every day for appointments and stuff. Um, okay. And then we, and, and then ended up, like I said, once we moved away from that company um, and couldn't really sell in South, sort of South Carolina, North Carolina very well, um, started doing Florida, basically started a sales org. And then we were like a dealer through SET, which was like one of the companies before uh, Lumia, which is how I met Cody Teal. Um, yeah. But then, you know, so I, we were basically doing the same sort of stuff you were doing where it's like, you know, putting jobs through whatever, you know, Palmetto and Empire and, you know, whoever else was in the area. Um, and some of those worked out and some of them did not work out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. We're joking that uh, until you haven't been paid in solar, you haven't actually been in solar. So yeah, for sure. Um, until, you know, until you've been, uh, until you've been having been paid on five figures in jobs, then, uh, then you're like an initiate. And once it's six figures, then it's like, okay, now, now you're a solar rep. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Which honestly is really sad when you think about it. Like we joke about it. Cause like what else is there to do? But the fact that that's something that's even a joke and such a consistent experience is kind of, I'm hoping that this kind of like solar winter that we've been going through kind of weeds out a lot of that nonsense and, uh, you know, yeah. we end up at a more, I know you've been uh, at legacy for a little while now and that's been pretty stable for you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's been be much better. And that's one of the reasons why I like, you know, switch to them and just cause it's sick of being a smaller dealer is not getting paid out and just so many ups and downs. And yeah, there's going to be ups and downs at any company, I think. Um, but you know, that's at this point in my career, it's like when you have kids and all that and mortgage to pay, I'm just like, okay, mm -hmm. I want to, I'm, I'm over this not getting paid and I mean, maybe higher payout. Um, but yeah, risk sometimes a lot higher and yeah, I can't speak for everybody mm -hmm. in every market. There's still a, people out there that I know that have been in solar as long as I have, and they haven't had issues. It's pretty rare, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> to be in solar long, but so I guess it can be done, but yeah, no, I think it's definitely, a more common to have some ups and downs and hopefully we'll look back in five years from now and um, hopefully there'll be much less cases of um, companies going on our business and everything. So it seems to me like solars, hopefully, hopefully it's kind of been at more of a rock bottom coming up, but I don't know. What are your predictions? Do you think it's, are you, are you predicting that it'll start coming up and things are going to get a lot better? What are you seeing? Um, I, I think the things uh, my general sentiment is, so we've been very fortunate you know, we were in a, a good market and we were able to kind of weather the storm. And so we were one of the companies that's really been kind of growing month over month over the last year or so. Uh, when a lot of companies are really struggling, not to say we haven't had our struggles, but, um, you know, we've been very fortunate. Um, yeah. I think that it feels like things are kind of stabilizing. And I think that like the general prediction is that 
you know, we're going to keep kind of seeing companies fall off and there's going to be a consolidation. We're going to have like the companies that survived and probably still be some small and medium sized companies and then a couple larger companies. Um, and if you look at like kind of what the markets did in Europe and Australia and all that, assuming we follow that same pattern, you know, the, the cost of the customer is going to keep going down and, you know, more people will do it. So I think that like over the next several years, the, the profit and the commissions on it is going to go down and it's going to shrink, but I think it's going to get cheaper to install and easier to sell. So it's going to be, I don't think it's going to drop down to where it's as low as like fiber or pest control or something like that, but it's going to be like more of a volume sort of play to where, Hey, you know, you're not making as much, but you can sell two, three accounts a day, you know, pretty easily as opposed to, uh, yeah. You know, I don't know what the average is in solar these days. A little while back, some was, uh, I was, you know, I had on pretty good authority that like the average across all the companies was something like 1.8 deals per month per rep or something like that. So it's like, it's pretty low. Yeah. yeah. When yeah, people can no, make, it's, especially it's, in certain markets, when people can make four or $5,000 off of, you know, a couple deals, there's a lot of people that just like, they're happy yeah. making 80 to 120 grand a year and only working <laughs> 15 hours a month or, or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I always tell people, it's like, listen, uh, are you able to survive off of just passive income uh, right now? I was like, no? Okay, well, then you still got more money. Then you need to make more money still. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, some managers have like the keep their reps broke strategy. Just tell them to, you know, go out and blow all their money. So they'll constantly <laughs> be broke. So they'll have to come back and work. <laughs> so. I've made that joke, but I think it's a lot better to encourage them to like, you know, invest their money into like properties and stuff like that. So they're able to earn passive yeah. income. So if you want to buy a Lambo, that's fine, but just put it on Turo or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like stay broke because you have it all in investments, you know, then yeah, yeah. you're still broke. Although, dude, I, right now. I admire the people like if I was going to buy like a Lambo or something and then put it on Turo. It would have to just be a Turo car. Like the people that are like, oh yeah, like I have this. And then like I rent it out like 10 days a month and that covers that. And I make a little bit of money off it. I don't think I could let other people drive my car if I was also driving the Lambo. Yeah. People aren't going to take care of, people aren't going to take care of it. I would like get it back and I'd be like, where's, there's, there's a scratch on this. And like, there's a stuff yeah. on the seat. And I'd be like, <laughs> so I wouldn't be able to do both. I would have to pick one or the other. Yeah, that'd be hard. Yeah, especially because we actually do that with our house here in uh san diego is we rent we airbnb or rent out we have like a little casita a little adu extra unit so we rent out but even that's okay. like hard because you know one person brought a cat in and cat just like tore up the couch we had in there and you know other people it's like it broke the toilet maybe it wasn't their fault but it's just like man i didn't think about all this stuff that you have to well, deal and with in Cali and in California, it's basically it's really hard to evict someone if they're causing nonsense, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like you I can just it's... end up with a squatter living in your house. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, during COVID, they made it like illegal to evict people. So I don't think it's that way now. But I know during COVID, like literally, people would just not pay their their uh, rent the entire time, and mm -hmm. they couldn't evict them. So. Is it so? Is it like a whole separate? Is it like a separate? It's attached to the house, and it's just like, hey, you go up these stairs, and it's like a separate unit sort of thing. Yeah, it's just on the side of our house. It's still like attached to the house, but it has its like separate entrance. It's okay. just basically like a studio apartment. It has a little kitchenette and you know bed. So we rent that out. Well, I'm sure house. I'm sure that helps a lot because I I've never looked at San Diego property values, but I'm assuming that it's uh, extremely expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's insane. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and so many people were surprised. So many people are like looking for places here. Like we get messages every month saying, Hey, is your place of open? I got a buddy that's looking for a place. So it's like constantly there's people looking. I'm like, man, it's expensive as stuff is. Um, so what do you, what do you rent out the additional unit for? Like, what does it cost per month? Uh, we're doing it for 1400 a month, which okay. that's yeah. And that's like where, yeah, we're giving them a good deal. So I guess, don't be hitting me up asking for the, for the same deal. Like, watch someone <laughs> yeah, listen to this like three years from now. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you're cutting people a deal. <laughs> so, like, no, it's, it's so, 2400 now. Uh, that's yeah, funny. Yeah. Well, part of it is the person we have. It's this lady we go to church with and she babysits our kids and stuff like that sometimes. So, because I think oh, okay, we gotcha. get 15 or 1600 a month, maybe, but at no, the time of this recording, at least. But, yeah. Uh, that's good. 
Yeah, but uh, having a low most... maintenance tenant is worth a little. Pay, maybe making a little bit less. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, but yeah, no, it's it's that because she has her daughter in there, and um, you know, it's just like a one. There's just one bed in there, so I think her daughter actually like sleeps on uh, the four on like yoga mats. So it's like, man, I hmm. um, guess we're helping them out, but it's sad to see that like some the housing people get so desperate for housing out here that they'll almost do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's a tough place, but, but yeah, lots yeah, of money. It's crazy. Made, so. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, it's like compared to like, com- compared to like Houston or something like that, where it's like, uh, you can get an extremely nice house for like, uh, like a half mil. Uh, I don't yeah. imagine a, a half mil in San Diego gets you like a, a shack on the beach, uh, not on the yeah. beach, like a shack somewhere very far from the yeah. beach. <laughs> exactly. I know. I have a buddy that's in Houston, actually, that's come out and done like blitzes with us. And he's just like shocked at how much everything is when he's out here. You know, mm-hmm. it's like gas, food, um, yeah, hotels, everything. So, yeah, for sure. That's yeah, an expensive place, kind of a mess, but hey, lots of money in solar out here. So, don't let that scare yeah, you away good. from the solar market if you want to come. And great, we- great weather. Diego, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, well, cool. So yeah, I want to get back to, I know your VP at the, uh, E equals there. So how did you get into that role? Was that something where you just contacted by the owners or were looking for someone or had you been with that company for a little bit and kind of built your way up or how did you get into that? No, so I, um, I knew, uh, Cody Teal from like the pre Lumio days. We worked together for a little bit and, uh, after I left Lumio uh, for a number of reasons, uh, they uh, I honestly kind of like went into a little bit of a funk and wasn't really sure what to do. Um, so I kind of took like, I don't know, it was at least six months off or something like that, trying to find my uh, find myself or something. But uh, I was just talking with Cody and he was like, well, just come out and sell in Illinois for a little bit until you figure out what, uh, what you want to do. He was like, you can just come out here and not worry about the managing thing or whatever else. Just bring out some setters and go close and close some deals, make some money. Um, and then from there I was like, Oh wow, this market is amazing. Blah, blah, blah. So, um, we just kind of talked and, you know, he was looking for someone to kind of take over managing the sales side of things so that he could focus on the growth element. Um, you know, cause they were doing, I think it was like 30, 40 a month. Um, and he wanted to obviously get it bigger than that. So came on and just started, uh, you know, I've got a really talented setter manager who manages the setter side of things. Um, and he, you know, we just went to work recruiting closers, recruiting setters and growing it out. And now we do between like 120, 150 a month, uh, now. So, um, pretty solid growth for, you know, the last year or so. And, uh, especially in Illinois, which is a great market, obviously changing quite a bit with the NEM 1.0 going away, shifting to a lot more like what, California is uh, now with in terms of like the only offsetting the supply charges and you know, you're gonna have to set up a battery to export and and all that. Yeah. 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 I heard that. Oh, that's cool. So I didn't even know that was Cody at Teal's company. Yeah. He's been on the podcast here and I knew he. Oh, really? Oh, cool. I I didn't know that's what it was called actually. So yeah, Cody's a great guy. Good stuff. He was for sure. Yeah. That's cool though. So you, uh, so were you managing, did you come on as like the VP or were you, uh, just kind of like running with setters, closing deals and eventually he's like, Oh, okay. You know what? Just run. Let's have you just, I think it was, I I teased Cody and said that it was a very clever recruiting strategy. And he was like, I wasn't trying to recruit you. I was helping a friend out. I was like, "Eh, maybe a little bit of both, but, uh, he was definitely, because I told him at the time I told him, I was like, I don't even know if I want to manage anymore. I was like, you know, you look at this and I mean, you know, where it's like, sometimes for me, like what I get the most meaning out of life and everything is by helping other people have success and whatever. But at the time I was really frustrated and I was like, dude, like I've got, you know, people with closers or whatever that are making more money. Uh, just like, you know, it's no, it's no, no stress or whatever. You go out, you close some deals, blah, blah, blah. And then you're, you know, you're making six figures and none of the nonsense. And I thought maybe I wanted to do that, but I, it wasn't very long before I was like, you know what? Yeah. I, it was cause it was already growing really, really quickly. Um, once I, I sent out some messages to people and said, Hey, I, I took some time off, but I'm back. Who wants to join up and, you know, yeah. do uh, round two. Uh, we call that, we call the team, the solar mafia. So it was like, well, we're going to do 2.0 we're gonna do solar mafia 2.0. Who's down. Um, and then just talked with Cody from there. And that's how the VP role. So it didn't take too long. It was probably a couple months. Yeah. Okay. 
And then were you guys always just a blitz model? Do you have reps like in the market the whole time? Or are you guys 100%, 100% just blitz in these markets? It's it's vast majority blitzing, but we do have uh, a handful of people that are local to the Illinois market. Um, blitzing has been what I've been doing since like 2020 or thereabouts. So that's been kind of my yeah. bread and butter for better or worse. Um, I love it because it's like it's nice because you get... Uh, it's a really fun environment to bring people into and like, especially with like bringing in new people and whatnot. I think it adds like a, a social element and stuff that like doesn't really exist in a lot of places where you get to hang out with your friends, whatever else. But like, you know, you're just basically working. Uh, it's a lot easier to get people to work, you know, really long days and get full effort. And they're just kind of living and breathing the sales stuff for, you know, that 12 days that they're out there. Um, and when you're trying to bring on new people and train them, just like having that kind of that, super immersive aspect to it, I think really helps shorten training times quite a bit. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. There's definitely some good, uh, pros with blitzing. It's like, like you said, you get people bought in, they're going to work way more, um, put in the long days. Um, but yeah, some of the cons I've seen, I'm curious to know how you guys maybe, um, like get past some of this stuff, but Mm I I heard from companies that only do the blitzing model and it's like, they have this huge influx of sales and then no one does anything till the next blitz. Yep. Um, even if, cause some companies, they're not strictly blitz models, but they do, maybe they'll do like a blitz a month. And the idea is that they'll push hard, but then they'll still keep selling a little bit. But most of the time I heard that, Oh, they go hard for the blitz, but then they basically just take the next, you know, two and a half weeks off after the blitz is over right. and don't work the rest of the month when that's not what they wanted them to do. Um, mm-hmm. so I guess that's the first well, first question. How do you get, how do you guys overcome that? Or I don't know how often you do blitzes, but, um, I don't know. What's your thoughts on that? How do you get people to like, maybe the people that are working locally, how do you get them to still keep producing, um, right. only not just work during the blitz times? Yeah. So, cause uh, you're exactly right. And operate the ops teams will hate that because like, it's like, so if you're doing, uh, like 200 deals in two weeks is not preferable over 50 deals a week consistently because then it's a lot, it's the same number of deals per month, but like you're just having 50 coming a week. It's a lot easier for ops to handle and it keeps the install crews consistent and all that. Um, The way we got around that. So it's like, if you're a younger team, if you're a smaller team, um, that can be tough to deal with. But as long as you're large enough to split up into two groups, like, so what we do is we basically run like, 12 day blitzes. And then there's like a travel day on each end. So it's 10 days in market. Um, and we basically, and then there's like two days between a blitz. So it's basically, basically there's always like, there's almost always a blitz going on. There's like some off weeks. We basically have like some by weeks, like worked into the schedule where there's no blitz going, um, just to give like managers and stuff a break. Um, because if you're managing and stuff, like there's no, uh, you know, the reps are getting that time off, but the management is in. So when it's just constantly going, uh, and then it's up to people. Um, everyone does at least one blitz a month. And then some people will be like, Hey, I'm going to stick around for the next, I'm going to do two this month. So they'll have that two days of downtime in between and they can like, you know, so like in Illinois, sometimes people will like go up to Chicago for two days and have some fun up there or whatever, and then come back down. Um, so that's what we did is we just basically split it up so that we're doing two, two blitzes a month. And, and that just allows it to be a lot more consistent as opposed to like all the volume coming in during just two weeks of time. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So you have kind of like the A, then the second team comes in for a blitz. So it's like fresh guys mm-hmm. and they're keeping it rolling. Okay. Yep. That's cool. Um, how do you, and then are, are these guys, are they all coming from like out of state, different markets? They're all like non-local or some guys like living in the market and then they're just working on the blitzes. What does that look like? For um, most of the time, and people mostly just stick to the blitz schedule, whether they're in market or not. But mo- the vast majority are coming from other states. So we've got a bunch of people from Virginia, uh, Denver, uh, the Carolinas. Uh, I think we have someone in Florida, a couple from Utah. So they're from all over the place. Um, and then we, for new people, will often cover like their first plane ticket out. Um, yeah. but other than that, like people have to, I think you got to have a little bit of buy-in on that. So it's like just, and trying to coordinate travel and like booking plane tickets for stuff is just a complete mess, especially if there's like delays and all that stuff. So I've experimented with doing that. And in my opinion, it's like, if people aren't willing to pay five, 600 bucks to come out to market for the opportunity to make, you know, five figures, uh, in 12 days, then like, you know, 
okay, go go do something else yeah. then. I think that little bit of buy-in just makes it it makes it a lot easier. It, it, get, it makes people more invested. You know, it's like they're more likely to push harder and to you know, and then just like that kind of step of like self belief of like, hey, I'm willing to like put down five hundred bucks because I know I'm going to make this back. You know, it just I, in my opinion, it helps a lot. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, definitely a huge difference of reps putting some money on the line. It's like they say, people that pay, pay attention. So I think same thing. Um, I haven't, I haven't heard that. Or, I, I haven't heard that before. That's good. I'm going to steal that. Yeah. 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 Tell that to your guys. But no, I mean, there's literally like psychology behind it where it's like, if you don't pay for something, uh, we don't value it as much, you know? So it's like, uh, yeah. you know, if you, if you just give someone a Ferrari for free, they're not going to take care of it as much as the person who bought the Ferrari. They're just going to treat it. They're just going to beat on it, whatever else is, but the person who paid, you know, a quarter mil for that Ferrari. Uh, well, I guess that's a really cheap Ferrari, but, um, <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, are you a car guy? Did you see that new F80 that they, uh, announced? I didn't see it. I'm not a huge car guy. I mean, I appreciate them, but, um, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful car. Really cool. It's insanely okay. expensive, but it's still, uh, it's a, like, it's a, six cylinder hybrid now so it's like it's cool but like it'd be cool if it was a v8 <laughs> or, yeah. or v10 v12 yeah but. that's cool no i like doing i don't know if you've done the incentives where you take the guys to like the the racetracks or whatever where, where you can rent like the you know ferraris and, mm-hmm. and then, you know audis i've done that a few times and that's super yeah, that's cool. a blast. i think i drove like the r8 last time and uh, oh nice a couple other ones yeah so I like doing those that. Those no, are super cool. Yeah, but I don't know much. I know the names of a few of them, but besides that, right. um, not much. Yeah. No, we're doing, uh, we like to do, uh, it's actually Cody's uh, big thing is he likes to do experiences. So, because so, people just remember that stuff a lot more. So our, a lot of our competitions yeah. tend to be uh, experience based. So we're doing like oh, a cool. trip to, we went to New Zealand. Um, our company trip that you could win last year was a trip to New Zealand. Um Cool. Uh, this year, uh, the trip you can compete for is a uh, trip to South Korea. Um, nice. We took everyone. We were in Ohio, so we took everyone to uh, Cedar Point. Have you heard of Cedar Point? Oh, yeah. Isn't that a huge like theme park? Has those yeah, so I was, I was teasing people because people are like, oh, it's the, like it's the roller coaster capital of the world. And I was like, ain't no way the roller coaster capital of the world is in Sandusky, Ohio. I was like, I refuse yeah. to believe this. But then like... Uh, so I was fully expect. I don't know why I didn't just Google it, but like we got there and I was expecting like, like a somewhat larger state fair or something like that. And this thing is huge. And apparently it has like, um, I think like of the top 10 roller coasters in the world, like five of them are there. Um, and I've never been on a roller coaster that goes 105 miles per hour. Like that was just, it was insanity. It was super fun. <laughs> Highly recommend it. Yeah, that's cool. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, no, I love the experiences too. But yeah, like another thing I've seen with blitzes is, um, especially when you're bringing in guys from maybe outside the market, um, if they don't have maybe a great blitz, maybe they didn't make hit their goals, make as much as they wanted. I see just like a lot of turnover where they're like, oh, I'm mm-hmm. not coming back or whatever. So what do you guys do to like keep the reps bought in and not just like come on one blitz and be like, oh, maybe I'll do one next year, but actually have them be right. part of the company and fit in the culture what what's some i don't know things you guys have done to be successful with that so i think that uh you got to give people opportunity for advancement we um and so we basically have two paths it's like hey you can either like go down like and become like a really good setter and then get into setter managing and stuff if you want because like there's pros and cons you know it's like so a lot of people view like oh well, like well after i'm a setter for a little while i have to become a closer and it's like it's two different things there And as long as there's not a huge pay differential there, it's like, honestly, like being a setter is a lot. Don't get me wrong. That's the setting of the appointment is really hard. But what's nice is that you're able to like, you're able to go out of blitz, you set appointments, someone else closes them and you can pretty much just wash your hands of it. You're not having to manage the accounts or stay on top of the customers and make sure they stay in the deal for 30 days while you get the install and all that stuff. So it's a lot lower stress. Um, but some people, if they want to move into like the self genning or whatever, you kind of have to give people those options. Uh, and then I think as long as you really focus on like the experience side of things, because you're asking people to be away from their homes and all that other stuff. So we always book like, uh, you know, like higher end Airbnbs and just make sure it's someplace that you want. You know, I've heard of blitz teams where it's like they're putting people in like crappy hotel rooms and putting like three or four dudes in a double hotel room. And it's like, that's not like a fun experience that someone wants to come back to. But if it's in like, 
a nice house where it's like, yeah, like, you know, we're in this, you know, this badass house where it's got seven bedrooms and seven bathrooms and there's a pool table and whatever else, you know, it just gives like a really, it'll keep people keep coming back for that camaraderie and that experience. Um, and then we do, uh, especially for newer setters, we'll like offer like some kind of like uh, pay per sit uh, set up and whatever, so that they're making some kind of money right away. So, uh, and are able to see like, Hey, this is real. Cause I mean, you know, when you're recruiting people in solar, the hardest part is getting them through that first month or two while they get in their yeah. pipeline built up. Cause even if they come out and just like completely, you know, lights out there, uh, it's still going to take them 30 days to get paid, you know, yeah. at least. I don't know. In California, it might even be longer. What's your install timelines like out there? I'd imagine they're lengthy. Yeah, yeah. It can. Uh, I would say probably forty-five days. Pretty good oh, that's average. Not too bad. Fresh right now. So not not bad. There's definitely been. But still, you're looking yeah, at you're looking at two months before someone gets paid. Even if someone something yeah. gets you, boom, sold forty-five days, and then a week or two to get paid after the install. Um, so exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, we do something similar. We do. It's called eight and eight where we push guys to all the new guys, they get like, um, it's kind of like a prize every time they hit a cell for their first eight weeks. And then if guys, if they, if they do get eight deals in their first eight weeks and they get a company cruise that they do at the end of the year. So it's kind of like, you know, put pushing them to like, Hey, hit it quick and then get paid. Cause I don't know if you've run the stats on it, but I've heard people that have like run the stats and their attention on reps that don't get like, uh, I think it's like a deal in their first two weeks or something. Um, I think it's like, oh, it's I don't know, less, less than 5% sure. stick. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Oh, almost all of them quit. So yeah, I think come guys listen to this. Um, it's like, what can you do to get reps some money so they can see some money and, um, yeah, get some deals under their belts just cause also I think they work less. I think people have heard stories of solar too, just that companies don't pay out. So I think sometimes I bring on new guys where they've never heard much about solar and the money looks unbelievable, but then mm-hmm. they almost like don't even believe that they're going to get paid yep. until they like, get that first. Paycheck. Yeah. And their, and their wife or their girlfriend or their parents or whoever is telling them like, Oh, like this is, I mean, when I first got into 1099 sales, uh, my parents were like, what, what the heck do you mean? They're not paying you. Like, what are you talking about? Uh, and, uh, and I was like, well, like if you sell stuff, it's fine. So it's like any 1099 commission only job. I always tell people, it's like, Hey, I, I can say all the best stuff to you in the world, but until your first paycheck hits your account, like this, it's not actually real to you. So making sure that they get that first paycheck as quickly as possible. Um, yeah. especially for someone new to sales, because if you can get someone to make it so that their first paycheck is, you know, four or five grand, you know, most people, you know, especially in the early 20s, like they haven't seen a check like that, uh, before. So you know, if you're able to do that, you can get them hooked on it really quickly. Yeah, exactly. But if you don't, like you said, you lose them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've got this 18 year old kid that I go to church with. He's working with us right now, and he's he's done he's done pretty well. He's gotten I think four or five deals, and um, it's been with us like a month, month and a half. And nice. uh, yeah, but he just keeps telling me there's been days where uh, like he's he's actually still in classes and stuff. But he's like, man, once he hasn't gotten an install yet, he's like, man, I promise you once I see that actual money, I'm going to work so much harder. I know I've like fronted him some money. He's like, dude, Mm -hmm. I got to see that this money's real. Then I'm going to be like all in it for sure. I'm just like, dude, just stick with it, man. It's real. Mm -hmm. And then because I know. Have you ever have you ever had to talk to someone's parents before to convince them that it's like, hey, like this is real. Like I'm not trying to like scam your son. Like (laughs) it's fine (laughs) because I have. (laughs) Yeah. I don't, well, I've kind of had to do this with this kid because actually, you know what? I think he turns 18 in December, so he's not even 18 yet. Mm-hmm. But his parents, I go to church with his parents. So it's funny. Oh, okay. we, did this, yeah, we did this blitz last month and his parents were like super nervous letting him come out. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, I'm like, dude, I can talk to your parents. It's like I will go to church with them. So we'll make sure we're not doing like hard drugs. We're not. We're not, right. bringing, we're not bringing strippers on the on the blitz nothing like that like we'll keep it clean yeah, for sure so he came for well, like, it's even like oh, even it's even just like the smaller stuff too when you have someone that's younger like that because you know it's like 
Yeah, I don't know how strict you are with it, but it's like, you know, it, California weed's legal and, you know, people like their weed pens or like drinking beers and stuff, stuff that isn't a big deal. You know, if you got everyone who's 24 to 34 or whatever, or 24 up or whatever, but you know, once you have an 18 year old in the house, you gotta be much more cognizant of those sorts of things for sure. Yeah. I know you don't think about it, but yeah, that brings up another point for you guys. Um, cause you know, when we do blitzes, it's almost all people that have been with the company and, um, we probably should do it more getting like newer guys and guys from out of state coming and stuff like that. But for you guys where there's like, pro- it sounds like there's a lot of like newer reps and maybe reps that people haven't met and things like that. So do you guys do any like vetting and make sure there's not going to be any like knuckleheads or people bringing like, you know, like cocaine to the house and crazy <laughs> stuff. Crazy uh, stuff like it's that. been a while since we've had like a serious incident. Um, there's definitely been some stuff that's happened, but, uh, um, definitely just like, uh, we always, we do multiple interviews. People are part of like the calls and we talk to them on zoom. We talk to them on phone. Uh, they go through a couple training sessions. So we usually have a pretty good idea of someone's not, I think the biggest thing is just like, just trust your gut on people. Um, and just be like, yeah, this person's going to be a problem. And like, you know, for one reason or another, um, yeah. and then just, uh, you know, you don't want to push things like too underground or whatever. So it's people are welcome to have like beer and stuff at the house, but it's like, no, uh, no hard liquor uh, at a house. That's just too easy for, for things to get out of hand if you do that. Yeah. So it's like seltzers and beer house is fine, but uh, no tequila. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. yeah, no, that's what we've seen too. It's like, you know, guys have their vapes or whatever and it's mm-hmm. like, okay, that's all good. But yeah, we, you know, we haven't had any issues either. Hopefully it's common sense to most people, but it's like if you're getting crazy, do you know they're not going to produce? So yeah, one hundred percent. Whatever, guys, just keep it, keep it toned mm-hmm. down just for that, because it's like we don't want guys sleeping in until one in the afternoon and then rolling out all like hungover and stuff too. So yeah, for sure. And then with the vapes and stuff, it's like just don't be like hitting the don't, don't be like sitting in the car or vaping when you pull into territory with like you know <laughs> vape smoke like billowing out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> getting out smokes coming out the door that's, that's that's a big thing is just like always just uh you know we do a lot of things where we're like we like loop the neighborhoods multiple times and, and all that stuff so it's like you never know when someone's watching so it's like you know always be wave to everyone you see if you see trash pick it up and all that stuff because you know it's just tough to build credibility and trust when they see you in the same areas or multiple days someone sees you you know you never know when someone's driving by and they see you picking up trash uh, and then you toss it away. And then like, that might be the thing that makes them open the door. Cause they're like, Oh, like this guy, you know, picked up the trash or whatever. And plus it's just like yeah. the right thing to do. I feel like I always pick up trash when I walk by it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Well, and what do you do to, cause you're in Houston, your teams are all up in these other States blitz. And what are some things you do to like from afar, help the teams out? Do you do like calls with them or how, what's like your role in helping your teams and everything if you're not like physically at the blitzes? So yeah, we, um, so obviously we do like zoom calls and all that. We have like a, uh, I used WhatsApp for, uh, team chat for a long time, but now like we have like a really badass discord server that has like automations and, uh, like ticketing tools and some other stuff that like, so people can like, uh, request proposals and just do other stuff all through discord. Um, oh, cool. so when not there, a lot of it's just kind of keeping an eye on those discord channels and people know to tag me or whatever in certain stuff. And then obviously emails and project management and keeping stuff moving along. And, uh, yeah. you know, just having the, my phone is pretty much always blown up from a call or a text of some kind. So, yeah, that's good. That was one of my favorite things about the retreat was just, uh, you know, two and a half days where I was just like, nope, not going to be available. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. Nice to dis- disconnect a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's, yeah, that's the other thing. I think sometimes we get so stressed out not being in the business. Um, yep. I tried to like not pay attention, but you know, I had to like try to turn my brain off a little bit at this, at this event from like checking all the, you know, texts, mm-hmm. questions and letting the guys go. So I think it's important to disconnect and hopefully uh that's something you guys talk about being blitzes. What do your guys do to like recharge between the next blitz or is it more most guys just like kind of dis- disconnecting completely or what do, what do um, you guys typically do between blitzes? Uh people do various things. We got a decent number of people that really like us. We have like some uh non work related chats in the Discord. So like uh, we got a handful of people that we were all playing Helldivers 2 on PS5 for a little while, which is fun. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know if you're a gamer at all, but Helldivers 2 is a tremendous amount of fun. It's like you get on a team and there's four of you and you're basically, it's like, Star. do you ever see the movie Starship Troopers? Like uh, I, maybe not. Yeah, I don't think I did. So it's like, they're all, it's all just like, woo, like super earth democracy. We're taking democracy to the aliens and it's like this sort of thing. So it's just like, you're just out and you're just, you're just shooting bugs or there's like automatons, which are like robots. You just go out and you just blow stuff up. Uh, uh, and, it's, and you got a team of, four people and it's a lot of fun uh we got a bunch of people that do a lot of outdoor stuff so we have like a chat for that and then there's like a, a fitness chat and a memes chat and stuff like that so just like to kind of keep people kind of connected into the culture and stuff so that it's not just something that they're coming to for work um and i think kind of creating an environment where people are being friends and kind of sharing that you know that other sort of aspects of life as opposed to like it just being like oh i go to work I use it for this and then i just like completely disconnect for two weeks is you know i think that's a good thing to do yeah, no, I love that. That's good. And I think that's when reps stay, even reps that maybe aren't like producing at a high level yet and aren't making a ton of money. Um, I think that's something I see companies when they do a good job. We have a guy, for example, um, that he's he's been with us a year and a half now, but um, hasn't had that much success. Um, a lot of months he's getting, you know, one, one maybe two deals, um, not a ton of installs and. In. I've never seen a guy stick around as long as he's had as he had. And it's just because of stuff like that. Cause he loves the culture. He's got his friends here and um, he's starting to improve, but um, I think that's where you get a lot higher retention too, is if you can build stuff like that. But uh, that's cool, man. Well, James, I know you got another meeting to get here pretty soon. Um, so before we wrap up, if guys want to like connect with you more or, um, you know, maybe look into even joining a blitz with you guys, what's the best uh, way to connect with you? Um, I need to be more like you when it comes to my social media. Uh, the best way is probably to hit me up on Facebook, which would just be facebook.com slash J A M R W O O. Uh, and it's the same tag okay. on Instagram. Um, cool. but yeah, I don't, I'm not as, uh, I'm active in the solar groups and all that other stuff on Facebook, but I'm definitely, I don't have like your, uh, online presence and stuff. I probably need to be a little bit better about that. Yeah. Do you get a lot of recruits and stuff through that? Through like the podcast and whatever else? Uh, yeah, we get a decent amount, which, you know, I always plug it. If you want to hit up James or hit up myself, we can get you a good opportunity. In yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, yeah. If you're, yeah. If you want to check out Cali, definitely hit me up. Uh, yeah, but yeah, absolutely. I'll get, you know, I've got, we've got our squad that I told you I'm running our squad right now and we've got about 15 guys. And I would say, I would say half of them have come from the podcast. Um, oh, that's awesome. Know, either direct, directly or indirectly. It's like, you know, we get um, the guy that uh, runs the squad with me. He came from knowing me from the podcast, from social media, and then he brought on a few guys. So definitely a great way to recruit in social media. I'm not I'm not huge on social media. I'm trying to get better. Right. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things we learned in this event is like, don't apologize or say I'm not good at this thing yet. Right. But yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. good at this thing. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not good yet. Yeah, right? so I'm not. I'm not doing social media the way I should yet. But yeah. but no, that's really cool because if you think about it, someone comes to you through your podcast or whatever, they already know kind of your vibe and what you're about and all that other stuff. So I'd, you know, I'd imagine that most of the time it's a pretty good fit. I'm sure that every now and then someone sneaks in, and you're like, yeah, it's like you need to go away. But <laughs> for the most part, it's probably you know they get your vibe and all that. They're down with it, so it probably works out really well. Yeah, no, it's definitely been a good tool and. Um, yeah, that's one of the ways because people ask, oh, do you make money from the podcast and directly from the podcast? Not really like, yeah, I have guys I coach and stuff, but it's not like I run a bunch of sponsors or I'm like this Joe mm-hmm. Rogan type thing where I make all, all this insane money. But it's more just like, you know, building the personal brands, um, you build trust over time. So I think that's most most guys that do social media or content. They just don't take the time to be consistent with it long enough because you got to keep in mind, um, like I've been doing this podcast for four plus years and I don't think I got any recruits for like two years off of it, mm-hmm. but it's like, as you do it consistently, as people see you keep showing up, then that's when you start to, you know, get some people reaching out here and there and, um, yeah. get some stuff going like that. Yeah. You got to do, company. uh, get like one of those, uh, nose strip things and like some athletic greens and, you know, <laughs> you could just be making, that's what everyone does to make money is those nose strips and, and some kind of greens powder. I feel like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Or what is it? The, the better help, uh, 
like the therapy stuff. I don't know if oh yeah, 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 yeah. I've, I've, all all over the place. Things. Apparently, Facebook th- really thinks I need therapy. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. We'll keep it going. But uh, cool, James. Well, hey, um, appreciate you coming on and taking time out of your uh, VP schedule. Especially, I know you got probably a ton of stuff to catch up on being gone from this event. But um, yeah. yeah, any uh, just to wrap up here, any like final words of advice? Maybe a rep that's struggling, or um, or say you get a call from a rep that you know didn't hit the numbers they wanted to during the blitz. What do you tell that rep? Or how do you like get these guys out of a funk? What would you say to them? Um. So I think honestly, the as cheesy of an answer as it might sound, but the, if you're not producing where you want, and you're in a funk. The the best thing you can do, if, like if you're willing to ask for help, like you've just done like ninety percent of the work. Because the biggest issue, you know, again, talk about the retriever, like people isolate and whatever else. Um, but I mean, sales is you know it's ninety percent a, a head game. You know, if you go out there and don't think you're going to do well, well, guess what? You're not you're not going to do well. Um, I think the biggest thing you can do is if you're not like feeling hundred percent, whatever is just like, make sure you're doing the basics. Like whenever my stress levels and stuff are like higher than usual, it's usually like, I look at it and it's like, okay, what have I been eating? Have I been doing exercise? Like, Oh, well, it's like I had Popeye's two days in a row and then I haven't been to the gym for a week and you know, or whatever else. And it's like, you know, you get back to doing those basics or even just doing like, you don't have to go to the gym, just do a 20 minute walk. That was something that a friend of mine told me a long time ago. And if you're ever feeling stressed, just go walk for 15, 20 minutes and, that's like the best yeah. therapy you could ever ask. It's crazy what a 20 minute walk does. <laughs> yeah. So true. just going and doing that and something that I'll do with reps is like, if they're asking for help or whatever else is, you know, I'll literally be like, well, what are you doing right now? I'm like, oh, I'm sitting on the couch. I was like, okay, well let's get up. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to put my shoes on. We're going to go on a walk. Uh, and nice. then you just kind of talk and just have them like, then you're both going on a walk throughout the na- walk through the neighborhood or whatever. And you just do like that little pep talk while walking. Uh, and it's crazy what a big difference that makes. Hmm. Love that. Yeah, that's good. I've heard that's good for just like, you know, thinking of ideas and yeah, it, gets it helps like your brain process stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. All that. Yeah. And I guess that's why we go door to door. So people are yeah. knocking doors. <laughs> yeah, door to door. Yeah, plenty, like, of walk, plenty of walking for yeah, sure. 20 minutes between the next door, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Are, are you trying to make money and trying to get, have uh, really sexy calf muscles? Well, have I got the job for you? <laughs> yeah great for your mental health great for your fitness you can walk all yeah, day there you go love it uh, cool. well no taylor i really enjoyed it. thanks for having me on uh always a pleasure chatting I'm glad like i said glad we were finally able to connect and anytime if there's ever anything i can help with or whatever you know feel free to reach out and i'm sure that we'll be now that we've officially met we'll be running into each other a lot more since we're at all the same events and everything so <laughs> yeah 100 percent, my friend yeah can't wait to connect with you more at uh know we got some events coming up solar con jmc was the uh speaker what was that like speaker uh speaker liaison i think is what liaison okay yep yeah. so yeah we know he'll be at that we got that coming up in vegas it's in las vegas April. this year yeah yeah i know are you a slot Can machine guy uh not not too much slot. i'll get on some blackjack a little bit blackjack yeah like a little bit of roulette here and there but no i try to i hate losing money so yeah, for sure. No, blackjack. Blackjack's always fun. And then roulette's fun, like two, like three rounds and see if like the, the universe is on your side. And after that, just yeah. walk away from the roulette. <laughs> the second you win anything at the roulette table, walk away. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so we get all of that. Uh, but yeah, we'll be hanging out there. And yeah, now that we uh, know each other more, yeah, going to be fun to connect there. So anyone listening, yeah. definitely uh, hopefully you make it to those events. And um, but yeah, hit James up. Let him know you appreciate him coming on the podcast. And yeah, thanks for all you're doing for the industry. And um, yeah, we'll have to do another podcast in the future. But thanks for coming yep. on, my brother. Yeah, let's do it, man. Talk to you soon.